Howdy mates, good afternoon. Here's the third video for today. So we're still at Amberjack Environmental Park, but the very first thing that I wanted to point out to you guys is what's up in the sky. I don't know how well you guys can see, but if you are able to see the black objects in the sky that are flying, those are known as frigate birds. And you might be wondering why exactly are they called frigate birds? Yeah, like right now they're in a little swarm right up here. Well, they're called frigate birds because they actually spend most of their life flying, as a matter of fact. They hardly ever land except maybe to breed. But the male frigate bird typically has kind of like a reddish throat which can then stick out like a bulb so that's the case because that's its way of attracting a female but what's particularly fascinating about the frigate bird is you know in terms of like scale of its own weight and its wingspan it really doesn't match up so you figure they only are weighing up to two or so pounds. That's about it. And their wingspan can reach as wide as seven feet long. That's taller than I am. And I'm six, I'm a little over six foot. So to me, that's just, that's so remarkable to me. Yep, they're gone. But they do like to fly in groups, and typically if they ever feed, they usually just fly right above the water and snatch their prey. That's about it. They're not like pelicans where they'll land in the water and try to scoop it up. But it's just so remarkable just how they do spend most of their life flying, especially coasting too, because... There is a little bit of a breeze at the moment. But this is the famous Lemon Lake that is at Amberjack Environmental Park. And these little islands that you see are made up of the red mangroves. As I've mentioned the other day, red mangroves are well known. Ooh, I saw a monarch butterfly. There it is, yep. My bad, I got sidetracked. Red mangroves are known to make their own islands because of their roots. They like to collect as much sediment as they can, and in doing so, they create their little spots or islands. But then, actually, right next to me is the white mangrove. The white mangroves are typically the ones further away from the shore. There's some black mangroves, you can see them just a little bit, like down at the bottom here, where they kind of have the roots, or the pneumatophores, to be fancy, which kind of reminds you of a snorkel. But, this is more predominantly white mangrove, and you can actually see they're kind of flowering right now, too. Yep. Yep. Here we go. Oh yeah, oh, just saw a dragonfly. But yeah, it, this is a, yeah, as I was saying, predominantly white mangrove. But there is another particular tree, well, there is another particular plant that I want to point out to you guys, which we will come up to in just a moment. Okay, I finally approached it. This is the Carolina willow, and it is technically not really considered to be a type of tree until they grow tall enough. But the Carolina willow is one of the most common willows found in the southeast part of the United States. And they're even well known in the Everglades, too. So they actually, it's quite fascinating, they actually have a particular use. So the, well, the leaves, you could say, they actually produce something called silicon which is actually a bit similar to salicylic acid. And you may be thinking, like, that sounds dreadful, harmful. Well, not necessarily. 
actually with these leaves that chemical component that I'm speaking of silicon it's actually been used as a means of making aspirin as a matter of fact you know to reduce symptoms such as headaches so instead of relying just on pills you can also get it in its natural form but yeah you can use this willow as a means of obtaining something similar to aspirin it's really neat so it actually has a bit of a use for us as well and yeah they usually are mostly common in marsh-like habitats which makes sense because we can see a bit of stagnant brackish water but yeah you can see these all over the state of Florida and actually if you I pulled this piece off just for demonstration but their leaves they kind of remind you of looking at I don't know maybe like a seed pod you know like green beans or something I don't know just as a comparison but their leaves they have these serrated edges and if you were to magnify it they have these yellow glands and I believe that's part of the extraction of receiving the uh, silicon but yeah it's neat and also looking along the uh, stem the leaves alternate with each other too and not only that uh, yeah just let that decompose contribute to new soil but they will indeed produce these yellowish like flowers when it reaches around blooming time so that's also something that helps identify the particular Carolina willow. So alrighty, I think that about wraps up the video. I hope you guys got something out of this. Yeah, like I said, man, I'm just trying to learn what's down here as much as I can and sharing it to all of you. It's been a pleasure. So all right, mates, I hope all of you get to enjoy your Friday going into your weekend. And during on our journey is once again outwards. Take care, folks.